Did you know that an ordinary truck outputs up to 223 tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere per year? That's the same amount 14 Americans give off in a year, according to the Nature Conservancy organization. To mitigate such a strong negative effect on the environment, new technology was invented – a special electric highway for trucks. In it, as conceived by the engineers, heavy vehicles are driven by electricity, not fuel. But is there a future for the new technology? According to the International Transport Forum, which is a part of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, trucks and wagons will soon account for 15% of the projected increase in global CO2 emissions until 2050. Therefore, this problem needs to be addressed now. The world's car manufacturers are aware of this problem and are even making efforts to address it. So, in November 2017, Elon Musk presented his new electric Tesla semi-truck. Thanks to innovative technologies, a car with a full load of 36 tons accelerates to 100 km per hour in just 20 seconds, and if empty, then in 5 seconds. At the same time, the truck does not produce CO2, but it still participates in its creation, albeit indirectly. This is since electricity when charging a car is generated in most cases using fossil fuels. A more technologically advanced version of the electric truck is the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Such companies as Mercedes, BMW, Audi and others are actively leading in this area. In 2020, the Korean auto industry Hyundai joined this trend. They announced the start of tests of Exient fuel cell hydrogen trucks with a range of 400 kilometers. But as with the Tesla semi-trucks, how the hydrogen for the fuel cells was made plays a huge role. Nowadays, 76% of the world's hydrogen is obtained from the processing of natural gas with the release of CO2. In addition to the development of electric cars, advanced countries began to work in parallel on other technologies, among which the technology of creating electric highways quickly became the leader. This technology has three main directions. The first direction, the simplest one, proposes to install an overhead line equipment on existing autobahns and highways, similar to the ones used by trolley buses in cities. With the help of special equipment, pantographs, trucks will be able to connect to the network and drive on electricity, not fuel. The second direction involves the use of wireless induction systems that are installed under the asphalt and transmit energy to the car without direct contact. This technology is used today to charge phones wirelessly, but is still considered too expensive for mainstream use on the road. The third area focuses on the installation of electric rails, to which trucks will be connected using a special lever. It combines the low cost of the first direction and the convenience of the second, but requires solving several design features that engineers are struggling with today. And the most important thing is safety both for transport and pedestrians. The first direction is the most popular since it is simple enough for implementation on the roads. For example, Siemens demonstrated an electrical trunk with a contact network in the California city of Carson. The road is still only 3.2 kilometers long. Such a small distance is explained by the fact that the construction of a contact network per one kilometer of the road requires about $2.3 million. Germany is engaged in a large-scale promotion of the new technology. The government has spent $77 million to build trucks that can be connected to an overhead aerial cable via a pantograph. The new mode of transport can now save $22,000 in fuel for every 100,000 kilometers. Moreover, according to the Federal Ministry of the Environment, electric highways, or as they are also called, e-highway, are even more efficient than battery-powered electric trucks. According to the results of their research, trucks with gas engines have an efficiency of 20%, hydrogen 29%, batteries 62%. The electric road showed an efficiency of 77%. For the new type of transport, electric highways began to be created in various regions of the country. So in 2019, a 5-kilometer section of the road near Lübeck was put into operation. In the summer of 2020, the ELISA project was completed in Frankfurt, which included the construction of a new 10-kilometer stretch of road with overhead catenaries. It is planned to increase it by another 7 kilometers by 2022. Now, the German government is evaluating the experimental road sections and deciding which technology for electrifying highways will need to be introduced by the end of 2023. 
On the issue, they are actively opposed by lobbyists from the VDA automotive industry, who argue that the technology will not be widely used over long distances across Europe primarily due to the lack of agreements at the EU level. However, Sweden has gone farthest in the new technology. It was the pioneer in the opening of the first section of the road with an overhead contact network in 2016. But instead of dwelling on this version of the technology, it began to actively conduct experiments with others. So in December 2020, a section of a public wireless electric road between the airport and the city center was put into operation. To do this, the builders had to almost completely dig up the entire road, laying special copper wires inside. The government is also testing the installation of electric rail under trucks under a 2-kilometer stretch of road separately. What is more, tests are carried out to connect cars to electric roads. By the end of 2020, the Swedish government instructed the Ministry of Transportation to develop a special plan to electrify 2,000 kilometers of the country's roads by 2030. It is by this time that the state plans to create a transport sector independent of fossil fuels. Although the USA, Germany and Sweden are leading in the use of new technology, they are not alone in striving to reduce the amount of CO2 emitted into the atmosphere. However, it was they who were the first to combine the two problems, ecology and transport, and offer a fairly economical solution. This decision turned out to be so effective that it was supported in many countries around the world. Thus, researchers from Cambridge University's Center for Sustainable Road Freight also concluded that overhead catenaries and compatible heavy goods vehicles are the most efficient and cost-effective solution to fully decarbonize the UK's road freight network. Italy, impressed by the progress, also began experimenting with road electrification with the involvement of Siemens and Scania. And who knows, maybe more and more countries will start using this technology in the coming years reducing the carbon footprint in the transport industry. What do you think of this? Please share your opinion in the comments.